नमस्कार दोस्तों और जय हिंद आप सभी को स्वागत है इन माय चैनल 1971 वॉर बुक सीरीज पिछले वीडियो में आपने देखा था अबाउट हाउ लेफ्टिनेंट शहरियर हुदा हैड एक्चुअली स्केप फ्रॉम ढाका एंड केम टू इंडिया ही वाज अ ढाका यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट ड्यूरिंग ऑपरेशन सर्च लाइट और उन्होंने ढाका में पाकिस्तानी फौज के हीनियस बारबरिज्म को देखा था उसके बाद वो इंडिया में आ गए थे टू टेक द ट्रेनिंग टू ज्वाइन द मुक्ति वाहिनी आज हम जानेंगे कि उनको कैसे मूर्ति में भेजा गया था टू बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट बांग्लादेश वॉर कोर्स जिसका ट्रेनिंग खुद इंडियन आर्मी देने वाले थे उनको एट मूर्ति एंड ही वॉज गोइंग टू बी वन ऑफ द सिक्सटी वन कडेट्स जो कमीशन होने वाले थे एस सेकेंड लेफ्टिनेंट इन द मुक्ति वाहिनी and was going to lead the further operations aaj hum janenge about lieutenant shahriyar hudas joining murti and seeing combat against the pakistani army first hand as of now it's like up to the place where you cross the border the bsf apprehended you okay yeah yeah and then uh, we saw a bengal regiment uh, officer coming over in a pakistan army type jeep okay. and we found out that it was a dil captain gaffar later on gaffar okay. and later on he became a lieutenant colonel and also became a minister in the yes 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 okay. he also became a minister in general ishad's uh, cabinet later but at that time he was a captain and he rescued us from the psf and after learning that we are from fozdat cadet college and we wanted to join the liberation war he said hop into my jeep and i'll take you to the camp okay so he brought us over to the main uh, mukti yuddha camp in mukti vahini camp in the number 2 sector which was in motinagar place called motinagar we happy to see that a lot of our old friends from dhaka were already there and met uh, Met some of the officers. Uh, that was the head headquarters of number two sector, both for the regular army and and also uh, ordinary freedom fighters. Khalid Musharraf, uh, at that time a major, Major Khalid Musharraf was in charge. Okay. He was being assisted by uh, even Captain Haider, who was okay. in charge of the guerrilla thing. and the brigade major was a uh, major matin major matin later seen and met these officers i guess yes yes at that time we you know we had our first interview with them they checked us through and uh, major matin later on retired as a brigadier he was the chief of uh, bangladesh fire brigade hmm. later and uh, so we started our training we were placed in a company called ajis company it was named after the then dp of dhaka college dhaka college was a major college in dhaka right, right. and students unions vice president dp uh, ajis ajis had joined the mukti uh, mukti vahini so this company was named after him and all the dhaka boys city boys were put into that company and i was me and my friends uh, the three friends we were placed in a platoon called maya's platoon maya was muzaffar husain maya muzaffar husain maya is a he was a minister before he is also a minister in current cabinet the maya is from my neighborhood in old dhaka we knew him he was three years senior to us in academic right so we are placed in his platoon by the way later on that platoon became known as the crack platoon in dhaka crack platoon right. because it, okay. yes it carried out a lot of the sabotage activities major activities that shook the pakistan army it also brought to attention the international attention showing that things were not normal in bangladesh is pakistan as pakistan had claimed we started our training and the usual you know very hard training very poor food were being given 
you know, extremely poor quality food and we are not used to it. Also, this Motinagar camp was very close to the border, maybe just two, three kilometers away from the border. Okay. So, every now and then, the Pakistan army's artillery units in that Kunilla region, they would try to shell the camp. So, it was not very safe. So, after a while, uh, the higher authorities decided that the camp must be shifted further inwards. Okay. So, just a week after we joined, the camp was shifted. We all moved in the middle of the night to a place called Malagor. Malagor. Okay. Become the famous uh, Mukti Jiddha Bhaini, Mukti Bhaini Center. So it was further inwards, further inside into Tipra. And we moved there after a week and we started our training in full earnest. By the way, uh, just on the evening we were moving, my youngest brother was 15 at the time and his friends turned up in Matinagar and I, I was shocked as well and very happy to see them. So I told them, you know, hang, hang around with us, what are you doing? Well, they said that they were so fed up, they were so distressed that they wanted to go back to Dhaka. You know, they couldn't take the you know, tough life of being without proper food, without you know, comfort of home all middle class boys. But I told them that hang around with us. We have money, we will help you out. And I gave them some, some some money that I had with me so that they don't suffer from lack of proper food. If they can't take the camp food, they can go outside. There were uh, restaurants outside, etc. Uh, the bazaar was there, so they could go and eat there. What happened is that throughout the night, we moved to the other camp we worked. Next morning, when I looked for them, I couldn't find them. Okay. And that was the end of it. They just disappeared without telling me. Okay. So until after the war, I didn't know whether they were alive or dead. But after the war, I found that they're all right. They all reached Dhaka and just uh, kept low until they didn't want to get back to liberation. Okay. In the, Meantime, our training started very, you know, strongly with uh, full force. And then in the middle of June, we heard uh, that they're going to recruit officer cadets for the army, the regular force. Actually, General uh, General Tony and General Rob, at that time, they're full colonels, retired full colonels from Pakistan. Right, right. No, they're full colonels. Left hand no, no, uh, Left -hand. Then uh, is a few. Okay, yes, major they're both general, full major general. Yes, right. major generals. We address them as generals. And I think he also received the Birutto. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. He was in charge of the uh, Eastern Sector, Eastern Command. Okay. See, Bank uh, General Osmani was in the headquarters in uh, mm -hmm. Calcutta, and. Jan Rob was in charge of the uh, Eastern. He was based in Agar. It so happened that uh, I had an aunt, my father's elder sister, who was married to people, married to a man from Silet, who died in 1947. Okay. So my her husband happened to be a cousin of Jan Osman. So he knew my family. So he came on a visit. Rob also came to Malagod and I saw him. I went up to inquire about my aunt. I'm from North Bengal, Bogra, original home, home district. My aunt was based there and since General Osmani would go around all the sectors, all around Bangladesh, he had information about them. So I asked him and he said that everything is all right. They're uh, not in Bogra city, town anymore. They're hiding in the village. So, but they said. Then he asked me, he remembered that I was in Kuzat Karet College, he knew my dad. So he said, you and your friends here, mm -hmm. you have the right background. You must join the army. You join the army. You don't have to fight as uh, guerrillas. You become regular soldiers. You have to join the army. So he literally forced us. Okay. And we decided, okay, we'll join the army. You see, in the meantime, our pocket money, the money that 
I had taken from my cousins' sisters, my friends had taken their from their family members. We were running out of cash, so we also had difficulty uh, with the quality of food we were getting. So we thought, if we join the army, we'll get some pocket money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're giving us, they will give us something like hundred Indian rupees a month while we are training. We thought, well, with that money, we can improve our diets, if nothing else. Let's join the army, and once we are commissioned, we'll also be given 400 rupees a month, you know, uh, salary. So, it would be at least, we be more comfortable. And we can also fight more effectively than as guerrillas. But we made a pact that if we join, all four of us will join. Remember, I, I, I was one of the four. Otherwise, none of us will go into that. We'll continue being a being guerrillas. Fortunately, you know, because of cadet college background or otherwise, also we are quite fit. We are, we, all four of us were about to join Pakistan Army. Just, just the last moment we decided we wouldn't we will do so. So we were selected, and uh, last week of June. Arrangement was transport arrangements were made to ship, uh, move us to the training camp. From Malaghar, I think we had about 15 or 16 boys mm -hmm. of different age, the youngest. We had just passed our secondary in 1970, so we were the youngest. And you know, for officers' training, you need to be at least 70 guys. Okay. There were other, other people who were battle hardened. You know, some were already soldiers, NCOs or JCOs, and there were other students, battle hardened students. If you remember, you see, uh, Major Zia had defected, had declared independence in Chidogong, right. and all the Chidogong student, student activities had joined him, his battalion. It was the 8th Bengal. So, all those. Boys all, were already battle hardened because they were, when they fell back towards Indian border after giving fights. In the same way, the Second Bengal Regiment and Fourth Bengal Regiments they kept on giving fights against the Pakistan Army while falling back gradually towards the border. Mm -hmm. And all the way, many students had joined them, joined them in the fight. Students and other things. So while selecting these officer cadets for the army, these there were several boys selected from these battle hardened groups. Okay. As well as those of us who had already kind of background uh, in military type schools. The Pakistan also had Air Force schools in this Pakistan. There's a place called Sargoda, which was well known. There's a Sargoda. school called Lot. Right, right. But in Pakistan, West Pakistan. West Pakistan. So we had some boys who had background in those schools. Just like we had background in Cadet College, mm -hmm. in the East Pakistan. So about 15 or 16 of us had that kind of background, and then altogether we're 61 boys. The others were more usually older than us, three, four, five years older. Some were uh, student leaders. There's one one person who retired as a general later on, uh, Nurul Nabi. He was the uh, Goalkeeper of Pakistan football national football team. So he was six, seven years. Nurul Nabi. Right. Yes, Major General Nurul Nabi. He used to play for the Mohammedan team and also played for the national team. So there are people like them also. Very enthusiastic to fight against Pakistan Army, but they were senior to us. Somewhere seven, eight, nine years senior to us. Anyway, all, all of us were united in our purpose. So from uh, Malaghar, it took us, uh, you know, we were taken by road in BSF trucks. So in those days, the ro road connection was not very good. The border the roads were not very good. So it was pretty rough ride. We were taken to a place called in Assam in those days, just after the border, Dhanmanagar, okay, where the railway ended there. Okay. From there you could, you see Agartala didn't have any railway line at that time. Mm -hmm. So from Kamanagar we had to take the railway line to go to Govati. Okay. 
Gohati. So we did that. We stayed overnight in Gohati, why movie or something like that. We're all staying in the station. Then again, military buses, the military trucks came to pick us up. And we're taken to a place in Jalpaiguri district. The place was named Murthy. It was just at the base of the, you know, the mountains, I would say. It was surrounded by tea garden and forests. So, and also, they had a very fast run small river mm -hmm. where we used to take that. Very strong currents, very cold water coming just down from the mountains. We could, on a clear day, we could see all the top mounts like Everest or Anjanyanga and so on. It was pretty cold there and we started our training. Uh, that was beginning of July and the was a you huge in your training sir you were already given uh, you were already a GC or like you were given any rank? No, no, GC. GC. We are all gentlemen cadets. You, you don't get a rank until you are commissioned. Right. So we are we started as gentleman cadets. And you get commissioned as a second lieutenant, right, sir? Comm commissioned as a second lieutenant. Okay. So we started our training. The it was, I think, some of the best instructors from Indian Army were there. There was also a Bengali officer who came to visit me in Canada a couple of years ago. He was visiting Canada, so he dropped into. My place also. Captain, captain, even Captain Stanapati. Stanapati. He retired. Stanapati. He retired as Lieutenant Colonel later. Mm -hmm. There was a Colonel Thappa who was the chief instructor. Mm -hmm. He was a Gapal, I think. Mm -hmm. Colonel okay. Thappa. He probably retired as a brigadier. Most probably, I don't know. I was not in. I'm, I was not in touch with any of them after, after oh. training. Only after what? Only Captain Stanaputi stayed in touch with us, and because he is a Bengali, we naturally had you know special affection for him. There were five instructors, all with the rank of major. There's one lieutenant colonel, one full colonel, and I think there was a brigadier in charge of the entire base. The, the, the part of the base was for officers' training, excluded. Uh, secluded from the other part where General Mukti Bahini uh, recruits were also being trained for the that particular sector, uh, West Bengal site, okay. West Bengal and North Bengal site. So, but we are not allowed to mix. Only on a rare occasion, I think, I, I got to see some people from the ordinary camp. You know, our, our training was uh, very rigorous. So normally, the military military part of the training, as well as the academic part. You see, in the academy, uh, the syllabus is divided into two parts: some dealing with military subjects, some with non-military subjects. So, when a DC passes out, he also gets a bachelor's degree. Okay. Right. Right. You know, that is what it out of the, happens. Yeah, he gets a bachelor's degree. For that, non-military uh, non subjects are also taught. But in our case, we didn't have that because it was going to be very extensive and short. Three so months, it was extensive. Uh, it was 14 weeks. 14 weeks. Just over three, 14 weeks. Over three months. So extensively military subjects and very busy. We had very little sleep. You know, throughout the day, early starting from early morning, we would be working on the training all the time. So basically, our training was we are taught to be platoon leaders, to command a platoon, and how to command a company if needed. Not company. beyond that. And okay. Yeah, company. So basically, we are. We have been taught to lead platoon level uh, units in the in the battle. So 
you learned a lot of tactics, tactical uh, subjects, a bit of strategy, but very little administration. Okay. So I, I must. It's in the in the military academy. They also teach you administration, right, right. so that as soon as you join, you are able to administer. You know, take up administrative duties. But in our case, we did not learn much about administration. Okay. And the military part of the training. Of course, included battle in relation, live fires, everything that you do, uh, movement under artillery shelling, movement under crossfire, live fire is going on, and you are crawling through trenches, all those things, everything that was needed. It was very tough. Uh, fortunately, those of us who had this public school background or cadet college in right. special school background, for us it was normal. Because we had already done most of it back in the schools. But for other students who never had any military experience as such, it was very tough for some of them. Right. You know, some of them would fall sick, some of them would you know, <laughs> report to the hospital. Do you remember try to anybody take it. from that course, like uh, what I can say, uh, who much must have fallen sick or who must have been in trouble during the training? Anybody? And not in serious trouble and none seriously in, not serious. But there were there were major, uh, not not major, minor minor, you know, minor cases. Uh, so I don't remember anyone for having any major illness. Nothing major, right? Nothing major. Nothing. How was your interaction with Sheikh Kamal, sir? You must have met him met him there. Oh yes, Sheikh Kamal came as a cadet. He was our course mate in Dhaka University. He was a year senior to me. Sheikh Kamal is actually by eight. He's a couple of years senior, mm -hmm. but being the son of a politician and also being involved in student politics, he was. Right, right. Technically, he was just one year senior, but I think age-wise, maybe two or three years senior to us. But we became friends. We became friends. We had a lot of sympathy for him because his father was in jail, was interned, taken to uh, Pakistan, and his family were you know, interned. He didn't have any direct contact with them, so we had a lot of sympathy for him, uh, and we became very good friends. I met him a couple of times after liberation, and he always met me with goodwill. So at the end of 14 weeks of training, we were we had a passing out parade as usual, as happens in the academy. But we didn't have all the you know what I would say big shosha that normally takes place in the academy because we are in a you know mountain base and you know little things were not available for such a but we are happy that we'd be commissioned and we'd be going back to the battlefields. All of us were happy. And we, we discovered just after the passing out, at the passing out parade, uh, Sayyid Nazul Islam, Mr. Khajuddin Ahmed, and General Osmani, they were present. Okay. So we received our passing out certificates from them. And, and also the local MP and other sectors people from that north north bengal area they had come so we were quite happy arrangements but just after the passing out parade we found out our postings we discovered that those of us with uh, some sort of semi-military background mm -hmm. were posted to regular, regular army units See, all the all our cadet college boys mm -hmm. were mostly post regular army, Bengal regiments. Okay. And those those who had already fought battles, uh, you know, student leaders and uh, those people, they were posted to sector sector commands. Okay. You know, Mumbai, they're not Bengal regiment. They're just Mumbai. They're just Mumbai. 
So, you see, the entire, border, entire Bangladesh was divided into several sectors, and each sector had several sub sectors. Right. So, some of some of my officers were posted as sub sector commanders under various sectors, okay. and they were they were to lead the sectors, which consisted of sometimes some regular regular soldiers, but mostly Mukti Bahini volunteers. Okay, you know. Irregular soldiers, irregular elements, or also the guerrillas. They would be leading guerrillas also. And some of us were posted in regular East Bengal regiment. You see, by this time, what had happened is that the Bangladesh government had decided to increase the size of the regular forces. Okay. It is starting from March, if you march onwards, uh, the Mukti Bahinis including the soldiers, regular army, were basically fighting defensive war. Right, right. They were fighting the Pakistan army and because of the <coughs> lack of heavy armament, they didn't have artillery, they didn't have air force, nothing. So they had to, they were being forced back towards the border. So once they crossed over the border and took shelter in Indian territories, the war became basically a guerrilla war, hit and run war. So, right. Mukti Bhai soldiers, small in small groups, would enter Bangladesh, carry out an operation, and then hide in the villages. They would set up lots of village bases, right, right, or into the camps in the Indian side. So this is what was going on for almost three months. Uh, so uh, by June. Pakistan army had more or less captured the entire territory of East Pakistan. Our Mukti Bahini had fallen beyond the borders. So, July, August, actually June, July, August, these were the three months, basically we were just doing guerrilla war. Okay. You know, all the big operations in Dhaka, for example, guerrilla operations, were, which were carried out by some of my friends, well, during that period. You know, the, you were trained for yeah. crack platoon, you were meant to send to be Thak, to go to Dhaka, but exactly. got posted to Murti. Yeah, but my friends were going to Dhaka. They, each of them had gone three, four times and carried out operations. So this was the period of guerrilla operations. Right. But the government decided that in order to win territory and hold territory to liberate Bangladesh, mm -hmm. we need to increase the eyes of the regular um, regular army. So that's when the decision was taken to recruit officers from the field, have them commissioned and send them back. So also the regular number of units had to be increased. For example, there were uh, say four East Bengal regiment which was from which Khaled Musharraf. So Khaled Musharraf was told there is a brigade with his four is Bengal in the as the core. Right. So three units were raised, nine is Bengal, ten is Bengal, and four Bengal. In the same way, the second is Bengal regiment, which which could fall back intact, mm -hmm. was used as a brigade. That brigade was called S Brigade, then named after General Shofiullah. Right. He then Major Shofiullah, who was the was originally second in command, but uh, took over the command during the uh, Liberation War. And there was a third brigade called Z Brigade. K Brigade was the Khaled's, uh, mm -hmm. the one I was in. And there was a Z Brigade, again, with eight Bengal as core, you know. Okay. Bengal had, had fallen back intact, so it was used to raise S Brigade. The other two Bengal regiment units, which were in East Pakistan at that time, were badly hit because of their commanding officers. The first, the senior most Bengal regiment is the first Bengal regiment, which had fought very well in 1965 war as well against India. It served Lahore actually. It was posted in Lahore and it basically saved Lahore from being captured by India. So the first Bengal regiment was in Jessor. Its commanding officer was a was a guy called Lieutenant Colonel Jalil Bengali. 
but he betrayed the soldiers. Mm -hmm. He betrayed us. And because of his betrayal, when the uh, first general was inside the cantonment when it was attacked by other units of the army that were posted in Jaffa. Right. And it it lost almost half its soldiers. Half its soldiers were killed. It managed to come out the you know fifty percent strength under the leadership of the then Captain Hafiz. Mm -hmm. Hafiz and there was a Shahid left hand Anwar. Anwar. Again Anwar close the heart. Left hand Anwar. Anwar. Oh, Anwar, yes. Anwar. yes, second left hand Anwar. Mm -hmm. So Anwar, Anwar assisted Captain Hafiz, mm -hmm. and they managed to rescue about fifty percent of the soldiers. They came out. In the process, Anwar stayed back. I mean, he was the guy looking after the kind of rear guard. Well, the main troops uh, coming out of the. Men, he was guarding the rear and he fell shaheed during that. So, First Bengal was badly, badly mauled. Mm -hmm. It was not an intact unit and it could not, it could not be used to raise a brigade as such. In fact, it had to be supplemented with other soldiers to remain an unit. Right. At the time, it could join the Liberation War. In the same way, there was a third Bengal regiment, which was posted in Rangpur. You see, Pakistan army had decided all these units were dispersed mm -hmm. in various locations. They were not allowed to stay as an unit together. Right. Just, just before 20 March, this was their policy to weaken the units, mm -hmm. and also there was lack of communication between various companies of the unit and the headquarters of the unit. Right. So third Bengal also in Rangpur had a problem. It's some companies were uh, sent outside the Rangpur for so-called internal security duty or martial law duty. But basically they were dispersed so that they could be scattered. The so third Bengal again was picked into uh, it was it started fighting and the officers were it was Commanded by Pakistani colonel. That is a. So once they got. I have noticed that the Bengal regiment units, the commanding officer was always somebody who was Pakistani. Bengali officers were replaced when Pakistanis came. Like, at least as I mean, who were lieutenant colonels and commanded the units, just before. Ex except one. No, except one. Except one, right? Uh, the, the second Bengal regiment, which was in. Yadapur in Dhaka, mm -hmm. it was commanded by a Bengali officer. There was a lieutenant colonel Masood, Masood. and Masood. And Major Shafiullah was his twice. Mm -hmm. In fact, in that unit, uh, Zia was also the twice a year back. Right, right. Then Zia was posted to 8 Bengal mm -hmm. in Chidogong, and Shafiullah became the twice of that unit. But it was commanded by lieutenant colonel Masood. The lieutenant colonel Masood was a nationalist. He, he didn't trust the Pakistan army, his higher officers. So he prepared his soldiers, prepared his officers, motivated them to rebel actually. But unfortunately what happened is on 23rd March, if I remember the dates correctly, the brigade commander from Dhaka went to Jadapur for an inspection. Right. The rebellion has not taken place mm -hmm. at that time. So while coming back, he tricked, I think it was uh, pre-calculated, he said, Masood, you come along with us to the headquarters, GHQ, we have some discussions to do. So he took Colonel Masood along and Colonel Masood was interned. He couldn't return back to his unit. But he was a nationalist, he had prepared a unit, he had briefed them and Shafiullah was this twice he could take up from them, other officers. Right. Uh, for a, at that time, Captain Nasim and various other officers were there. They all were already motivated to rebel. So, Second Bengal was the only one, and, and First Bengal had a Bengali officer, as I mentioned. Lieutenant Colonel Jalil 
but he betrayed us. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Neil lost his job after the war. He betrayed because of him, we lost many soldiers. The first Bengal regiment, the pride of the regiment was really really badly mauled. Yeah. Badly mauled. So let me come back to my sector. In number two sector, Khaled Mushab raised this brigade and he pushed three of the very young officers as commanding officers because there were nobody else. Captain Jafar Imam, mm -hmm. with partly five, six years of service, was given the command of 10 Bengal. Captain Gaffar was given the command of 4 Bengal. And thus Captain Ainuddin, again, with maybe just six years of service, was given the command of nine million. So, my friends and I were all posted to this Bengal regiment units. Three of us came back to number two sector. I was posted in nine East Bengal. My friend Muni, uh, Mizan and Dida were posted in 10 Bengal. And Muni was posted in Bengal, which was in a different sector. But otherwise, we three came back to our old sector. We came back and reported to Khalid Mushraf in Malagar. Then, after a day or two, we had dispersed to our own units. I reported to Captain Ainuddin in 9 East Bengal Regiment. There was another officer with me, another course met, uh, Lieutenant Aziz, second Lieutenant Aziz, and myself, we were posted in 9 Bengal. When he joined 9 East Bengal, it was based in a place called Mantel. The battalion headquarters was a place called Mantel. Okay. And I went and reported there, Aziz and I. <coughs> Let me remember. Yes, Mantoli was the name of the place. And Nine East Bengal was basically it. If you know the geography of that area, mm -hmm. <coughs> a, on the Bangladeshi side, there's a uh, place called Kashba. So railway station, Kashba right, right. station. It's Akhavra. very close. South of Akhavra. Right. Yes, you are right. Kashba, Mantoli. It's on. Right, Mandubag is further side, further south. Okay, okay. Mandubag is the area, is the place where 10 Bengal was operating. Okay. 9 Bengal was operating in Kashba. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, 4 Bengal was further south. So I went and reported there. Uh, the battalion headquarters was a uh, maybe two, three miles inside. India, but by the time, by the by, the, uh, this uh, my battalion was raised on 17th, uh, 17th October, official raising day, and I joined the unit on 20th October. We are commissioned on 9th October. So by the time we traveled, went to Malagar and all that, so by the time we joined, it was 20th uh, October. By the time I joined, the Koshba railway station was already liberated by okay. my unit. And uh, I think through that railway station, Chittagong and Silet were connected, I guess. Chittagong and Silet, Chittagong and Dhaka. You see, from Kashba, you have to go up to Brahmanbadiya, from Akhura, Brahmanbadiya, and then you go towards Dhaka. And if you go north, you are going towards Silet. So both Silet and Dhaka were connected with Chiragam to Kashba. Okay, the railway line went. Place, I think. Very important place. Right. So, so our unit managed to liberate Kashba railway station area. Even before I joined the union. Then uh, we were given an, uh, our unit was supposed to carry out an operation on that was 23rd October. The objective was to liberate entire Koshba, Koshba area. Okay. So we had a 23rd, it was just after I joined the, we joined the 
battalion. So we are not actually myself didn't participate in that battle. Okay. But we are we are observing the battle. Uh, on the Indian side, there is a, a BSF uh, BSF outpost called Devipur. So the border that border area is called known as Kashba Devipur. So okay. on the hilltop, if, if you are traveling by rail or by road. Mm -hmm. uh, to Bangladesh, you can see the BSF outpost on the hill. Right. It's just about maybe one and a half kilometers or two kilometers away from the railway station. So over there, we had dug out trenches and uh, our sector commander, Khaled Musha was there. My unit commander, Captain Ainuddin, was, by, the, by then they had all, uh, give, all, all been given promotion. So uh, Khaled was a lieutenant colonel, Ainuddin was a major and my unit uh, adjutant was uh, originally Lieutenant Harun. By that time, he became a Captain Harun. Mm -hmm. Then Lieutenant Ajiz and myself, we were all watching from the hilltop. The operation was being carried out by uh, under the command of Captain Ashraf. Ashraf. Then when he had become major. He was the second in command of the battalion, twice. But mainly, the JCOs were in actual command doing the operation, uh, Captain Ashraf was guiding them. Mm -hmm. And the operation was highly successful. We recovered the entire land, Koshba area, right up to the CNB road. Kumila which connects the Brahmanbariya road. Okay. So basically, the communication. Pakistan's communication was totally cut off between, say, north, northern part and the southern part. That's what we did on 23rd October. October. I once think, it, uh, once Lieutenant it, Colonel Khalid Musharraf was wounded as well in the head. Yes, yes, yes. We had another uh, member of the parliament, MNA, a member of the National Assembly. Uh, Captain Suja, retired Captain Sujat Ali. He was a British Army captain. Okay. Uh, actually, he, his son is a very close friend of mine. He also lives in Ottawa. Okay. Based. So, Captain Sujat Ali was, the, was a politician, a member of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. He represented Bangladesh government to observe the operation. Okay. He and Khaled Mosharaf and my CEO were standing side by side in a trench. And I was about maybe three, four meters away from them in the same trench. Okay. The other observers were also in that trench. We had foreign uh, correspondents and we had the Indian brigade, uh, brigadier who was in charge of that area. He was there, several other officers. And the army had a very good artillery unit in that sector. In fact, it was commanded by a Bengali officer whose brother was my teacher at Fozart Kerat College. There was a Captain Zaman. He did not, he did not uh, join Bangladesh Army. He, did, okay. he served Pakistan Army. He started as a POW, went back to Pakistan. And he retired as a brigadier there. Okay. This guy, Bengali officer, Bengali. fighting for Pakistan. He was commanding the artillery unit and he was he was very effective in his shelling of, you know, you know the rebels and also shelling the Indian side. As soon as our operation started, he started shelling from Manamati's Kumila side mm -hmm. and shells started landing on the hilltop. One of the shells landed in our house. It was hardly maybe two meters away from Khaled Mushab. Khaled Mushab got wounded in his head in a splinters uh, head, seriously injured and the politician captain Shujat Ali he also got very badly injured in the stomach his intestine and all started coming out so captain Ainuddin myself Ajiz as well as Harun the four officers there we carried these guys back Ainuddin and myself we are involved in carrying Khaled Moshav down from the hill 
course, the back where ambulances were there, prepared for this kind of contingencies. Uh, then, first we carried Khalid Mushaf, then we carried down Captain Sujata. But we are not sure that they would survive. Fortunately, they did survive, both of them. So, for the rest of the Liberation War, they are not available. Khalid was not ever available. So, as soon as Khalid was wounded, uh, the then Captain Salek was Captain already Salek Chaudhary. Right. He was then a major. He took he took over as the sector commander. Okay. So that was one operation just after I joined the Liberation War. Right. And since that day, 23rd October, I was uh, Lieutenant Ajiz and I were told that you go and live in liberated, liberated Bangladesh. So I was given command of two companies. Ajiz was given command of two companies. You know, uh, the regimental structure in the subcontinental mm -hmm. army. You have four in, in an infantry regiment. You have four fighting companies and one headquarter company. The headquarter company stayed back in India. And the fighting companies were placed in liberated Bangladesh. <clears throat> From 23rd October onwards, I always lived in liberated Bangladesh. Never went back to spend a night in India. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my pride. That right. <laughs> three days after joining the unit, I could live in liberated Bangladesh. Liberated Bangladesh. <clears throat> And from that time onwards, we started having small skirmishes with the Pakistanis. That was the that was the highway, it was the you know, district board road. You know, on the other side, Pakistan army was placed. They were they had taken a position, and we had taken taken a position on this side. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, we tried to send a, a small contingent to ambush them. Can, they would send somebody to, you know, some groups to hit us. It, be, it continued like this, hit and run. And also on the highways also, we try to... Bohati exceptional experience hai of second lieutenant, now lieutenant Shahariyar Huda, including his experiences in combat operations, seeing his commanding officers and his own sector commander being wounded in action. Next video mein hum janenge about the rest of his all out war operation jab unke saath bhartiya fauj bhi join karta hai we will know more about how second lieutenant shahriyar huda advances deeper inside the territory of bangladesh for the last phase of the bangladesh liberation war stay tuned to know more in our next video thank you